Good late evening YouTube, this is Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. Apologies on the late video. The uh, washer and dryer saga continues at the house. But uh, we'll, we'll get that fixed up in time. But anyways, obviously I'm here to talk about the weather. Severe weather threats beginning to ramp back up again. And we're leaning towards, and based off what I've seen on the pattern, we've been starting to trend more and more towards damaging straight line winds more so than tornadoes still can't rule them out because the chance isn't really zero but we'll go over all the hazards for this upcoming week we're going to be taking a look almost exclusively at the euro also we'll say i'm not going to go too heavily into it because i mean the same areas that i've been talking about as far as fire weather is concerned you guys still have still aren't don't look to be getting too much relief in anytime soon so just try to cut down on your burning like I've been saying to anyone that's over there that somehow watched this video but just try and be responsible and in the meantime we will we will talk about more severe weather <clears throat> so for the most part the threat should be starting to die down around the eastern half of the country so small little slight risk area remaining and the tornado threat around here, around any severe weather area is less than 2%, although we did have a marginal risk around western Nebraska, and we've had three tornado reports. So still, some, still uh, something to be watched, but I think for the most part, the threat's over. And then we still could get some isolated hail on the uh, eastern half of the country, but I think for the most part, that's over. Threat really lies towards the uh, panhandle of Texas and the east and far eastern New Mexico. And the same goes with the wind threat. That's our greatest area of interest. And then, oddly enough, we have a small we had a small area that included Billings, Montana, for damaging straight line winds with severe associated with some some uh, thunderstorms. How about that? in may no less you don't see uh storms pop up around that around there that time of year that with any sort of significance but here we are this is a little bit more of an interesting threat damaging this is a very big uh slight risk area the main threat is also probably going to be damaging winds from what i've seen in previous models i i don't see anything indicating any sort of significant tornado threat however it's not zero but this big it's very large, slight risk area, and it could even be a moderate. Could even be upgraded to enhanced risk tomorrow. This includes uh, Colby, Kansas, Wichita, and then Kansas City. You guys are in play as well. Over towards Missouri, we have Hannibal and Jefferson City in play. Nebraska, you have McCook, Lincoln, Omaha, and Norfolk in play, and then Iowa, we have the capital, Des Moines, as an area of interest. Towards the marginal risk, we have Springfield, Illinois, St. Louis, you're in there as well. Springfield, Missouri, you're in there as well. Woodward, Oklahoma. And then towards Kansas, we have Garden City and Liberal in play. And this even stretches back into Colorado, just to the east of Denver, you're in play. And then Cheyenne, Wyoming, you're actually in play for this. And then Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Tornado threat is a 2%, mainly around where that slight risk is. Don't think that will uh, uptick to a 5%. Then these other two areas will be at will have a max area of 15%. So we'll look at day three. And we have only a marginal risk right now. It's a very large marginal risk. So this will have to be watched real closely to see if it will be upgraded. I'm kind of thinking no, but we'll have to take a look at the models and know for sure because I haven't even had a chance to look at them today. I've been so busy. But the days I'm most interested in, based on this uh, eight-day outlook here, is on days four through six. Day four, things start to pick up. We have a uh, we have a slight a 15% area. It's already, that's a slight risk essentially, and we have uh, a lot of the same areas that have been getting hit lately. Back in play once more. 
Minneapolis, you're in play for this as well. Duluth, you're in there. And then we have uh, Green Bay and Lacrosse in there as well for Wisconsin. Des Moines, you're in play again. Then uh, Omaha, Norfor Nor Norfolk. Nebraska, you guys are in play. Then Sioux Falls, you're also in play for the slight risk. I have to, we'll have to watch and see how this trends. By tomorrow, we'll have a little bit of a better idea of what's going on. And then this area really starts to expand on day five. Day five is Friday. And ironically, this is the nine-year anniversary of the uh, Moore, Oklahoma tornado that hit in 2013. That was, And it's also the last recorded EF5. We have... and. Looks like we'll have more weather on that day. Fortunately, not for Oklahoma City and more. Looks like you guys are outside of the slight risk area for now. However, we have Dallas in play for this as well. We do have Dallas in play for the slight risk. We have Little Rock in play as well. And then towards Missouri, we have Springfield, Jefferson City, and St. Louis in play. Then once and as well as Hannibal, then uh, Springfield, Peora, and uh, Chicago, you guys are in play. We have western parts of Kentucky, then towards Indiana, we got Evansville, Indianapolis, and Fort Wayne. You guys could be in the line for some significant weather come Friday. Then on Saturday, this area moves further off to the east, and that's when Eastern Kentucky comes into play. Charleston, you're in, and then Charleston, West Virginia, you're in play. The eastern parts of Ohio, you're in play. Then we got Pittsburgh, Cleveland. Well, Cleveland is actually not in it. We have Binghamton, Buffalo, Rochester, and Watertown in play for a slight risk of severe weather at this time. As for day seven and eight, Day 7, potential is too low. Day 8, we'll have to watch that closely because it says predictability too low. So let's take a look at these. Uh, let's let's go look at some bowling balls here. These are, uh, these are height and uh, these are basically energy anomalies right here. We're mainly looking for a uh, these uh, blue bowling balls here. Let me actually go over to this one. Might be a little bit easier to read for you guys. Uh, there we go. This is what I want right here. This one's pretty easy. We're looking for these, uh, and no innuendos, please, to anyone that I know that might be watching this video. I know I like, yeah, I, never mind. Anyway, these, uh, the, uh, red, the red areas are areas of high pressure, usually ridges, usually associated with more fair, stable weather. The areas in blue, especially the area that has a lot of isobars around in blue bo in the uh, blue kind of bowling ball looking thing, that is an area of low pressure and usually a storm system. So we'll jump through this every 24 hours leading up to 240 hours, and we will see what we have, to, what uh, Mother Nature might have in store for us in the coming week. So, we get one storm system here on when, on a Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon time frame. And this has a little bit of a negative tilt to it coming in. By Friday, and I hate saying this because this model is almost out of date completely. There will be a new model about three hours from now, but I won't be up by then. I'll be asleep. But uh, this is a pretty impressive looking storm system. Pretty intense looking from the looks of it, but it pushes so far north that a lot of these areas won't get a whole lot out of it. I mean, there will be some stronger thunderstorms, but there won't be... I mean, I guess you could call it an outbreak, but I think this is lending itself towards more of a uh, straight line damaging wind threat just based off what I'm seeing on the model. Then Tuesday and next, and Tuesday and next week on the twenty fourth, 
I'm going to be watching this. I would be watching around the Great Lakes region, maybe the Northern Plains again. And then this works its way into the Northeast. These storm, the pattern seems to be uh, having the jet stream shift north. And whenever the jet stream shifts north, the weather tends to be more active to the north. I'm also trying to keep an eye out for that uh, tropical system. Probably talk more about that tomorrow. So now we're going to take a look at the radar reflectivity. I'm going to move this up to about 24 hours out from uh, when this model started. So that's pretty much tomorrow morning. All is pretty quiet right now. Hang on. There we go. And then into the early afternoon hours, it looks like we get that line of storm start. We get a line of storms trying to develop again. Refires around the central plains lending itself mostly towards a straight line damaging wind threat. And this doesn't even match up with it. Okay. Ah, geez. There we go. Dang. Every time I move the mouse, it's almost temperamental, it feels like. But we'll watch this line move Tuesday afternoon into Wednesday into Wednesday morning and then this has a little bit of an interesting look but I'm not super impressed by it it's marginal severe threat slight little curve in the audiograph so I wouldn't be surprised if a spin up were to come from this it has a really odd look to it Wednesday the threats pretty minimal then as we get into Thursday morning bigger storm system comes in storms a lot and it already looks like we have a much more organized area of storms and then this has a really interesting look to it we'll go back a little bit you can see these little line segments here those are areas of interest there could be a few spin ups amongst that but I was really looking at this what in the world is that marginal severe and there is a curve in the hortograph and there is it's very limited but there is some directional shear towards the surface it's definitely not speed shear at all by any stretch but it's something that we could watch over the next couple of days because there is time for this to change this could easily uptrend or downtrend so that's it's going to be an area of interest for me on um, Friday Saturday we'll take a look at Saturday line of storms redevelops there's a line segment like we've been talking about I, I expect a little bit of a higher hail threat on Saturday as well on into Saturday morning and then we watch this move off to the northeast Things get pretty interesting again. Eh. And then Sunday, it looks like threat kind of shifts to the far northeastern corner of the U.S. And then there's a lot of activity going on towards the Gulf. Wouldn't necessarily say it's tropical or anything, but there could be a few strong severe storms, maybe a few special marine warnings. Then on Wednesday, we get another storm big storm system rolling in bringing a lot of unsettled weather looks like another line of thunderstorms this time it pushes a little for this time it's showing something a little bit further to the south around the ohio valley i don't know if it reaches the southeastern i may reach the carolinas as of right now but that's the end of our model run we'll keep an eye on that real close that's about 10 days out let's take a quick look at the low level jet We'll just put this in a whole loop. So that's what we got going on on Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, like, I don't really expect to see anything crazy with the low-level jet around our areas of interest. A lot of the low-level, a lot of the uh, greatest energy around the low-level jet is way too far to the south to be even concerned with. Oops, hit the wrong button there. So we'll watch that move off on Tuesday. 
little bit of activity on Thursday, maybe an increasing tornado threat, but not very impressive. Hang on a minute, but hold on a minute. Look towards the southern end of this. I'll take a little sample of that. Nope. Cape is limited here. Trying to make sure I have my, I've uh, looked over everything, but it looks like there's, there's not really much to go with here, which is a good thing. I'm definitely not complaining about that. But it looks like mostly the uh, damaging wind and hail threat has really started to take over this month, which is a good thing because April was a crazy month. We got walloped. We got absolutely walloped. Just taking a look at all the soundings that I can. Again, I'm not really seeing anything on sounding analogs right now. Of course, this is very far out and things can easily change, but there's some promising signs that maybe a uh, severe weather season might be uh, dying down, thankfully. If so, then I'm grateful for it. But that's all I got for this video may not be my best put together video but I was trying to get something out there for you guys I'm honestly I'm honestly exhausted <laughs> I'm sorry but um this has been tired metal head weather man remember to like comment subscribe share and I will see you in the next video good night